couple new upgrades since uh, my last video. I added this for holding my cables. I still need to clean up some of this stuff I haven't done yet, but it's nice to be able to just reach and grab the cables. Eventually I'm gonna run all the USB cables down and under too. I've been really focused on cable management. It's annoying as hell. This uh, is my new electroplating setup. It works a lot better when your solution's hot. Uh, so this is a temperature probe, which goes down into the machine. It's got this handy little stirring device. So here I can make it go slower or I can make it go faster. So uh, this is my nickel solution right now. I'm just getting it hot and mixing it up. Uh, I set it to a specified temperature and then I electroplate my replacement tips. Uh, I think I showed a video of me trying to do this outside with a nickel instead of an actual uh, pre-made solution using pure nickel rod, but uh, this is a much better setup. This is an amazing addition. Um, this is a HP Allegiant um, bench multimeter. The reason I love this multimeter is because of that word right there, rear. So my probes aren't hanging out in front and in my way. My probes hang right here. So when I want to work on something, I do my measurements, then I put my probes back. It's really great because it, it declutters my work area, which was getting way out of hand. The other thing I absolutely love about this meter is, you know, it's just one button I can press between voltage or whatever. Um, this button, frequency. I can now check clock frequencies without turning on the tech and waiting for it to come up. Not that I don't like looking at things with the tech, it's just when you're troubleshooting, the tech isn't a great tool. It takes a long time to fire up, but when you're learning, an oscilloscope is key because it gives you visualization. Once you know what your frequencies are supposed to be on your switch power supplies and your drivers, you can just go over here and hit freak, frequency, and boom, measure it, and away you go. The other thing I like is it does have dial check, which not all of the bench meters do have. Um, these are really crazy expensive. Uh, I picked this one up for like 150 bucks on eBay. It was broken. I get it here and it worked fine. So lucky me. And uh, I was planning on having to work on it, but I didn't have to. So, um, but it's just, just such a great tool uh, to have. And I, I have an older one uh, that I'm gonna be selling. This, uh, 8840A, and it's a nice meter, but um, the reason I'm selling it is because I need this. I need diode check. You know, when I'm checking a backlight circuit or something, diode check is critical. I mean, you have to be able to have a diode checker. So I had to upgrade to a better meter to get diode checker. So, so be it. Uh, for the sake of having my cables neatly stowed and not laying on my bench. So uh, the other thing I'm doing is I ordered some special cables for my scope. So I'm gonna run them down and they're gonna come under uh, under the bench. And I'm gonna run all the, the firewire cables down and under under the bench. I'm gonna, uh, really cable management is what I've been focusing on here in the last few days. I don't know if the video showed it, but I also got some Minda bottles uh, be careful when you buy these. Do not buy the shitty Chinese ones. Um, I bought them and I threw them away. The lids pop off and they break and they really bite. But if you get the U.S. built Minda bottles, they're a little they're expensive. You're gonna spend twenty bucks a piece for them, but you use them every day, so who cares? I mean, you need it to be reliable. So. The Chinese Minda bottles are a zero. Get the real ones. Uh, and that's it. So this is the big toy right here and this. Because uh, now I have to do some more electroplating. The, uh, the tips that I make that are super tiny and super sharp, they're great tips, but you know, just taking them and, and sliding them in wrong and going whack like that, oops, you, you screw them up. You know, so you gotta be crazy careful 
uh, with those tips that I make. So what I will probably end up doing is using this other FM203 down here and add two more probes and those will just be for those tips. And then I'll, when I use them, I'll be crazy careful about putting them back so I don't have to grind, polish, and replate. It's, it's like anything, when the tip is super sharp and the metal is super thin, it doesn't take much. And as you guys know, when you have super sharp uh, tweezers and you drop them, you pay for it. So uh, you do the same thing with these when you sharpen and plate them. <clears throat> but when you're working on a 1005 part, um, you want those or phones, you've got to have them. So anyway, that's the update. Just wanted to show you the handy dandy heater stir mixer for electroplating my tips.